Hello everyone, in this video I want to show you how you can calculate the real surface area of a region. Now the real surface area is simply the horizontal area of a region but corrected so that it factors in the elevation or slope of that region. And there can be a considerable difference between the just pure horizontal area and the real surface area. So in some projects this can become very important and it can make a huge difference between the financials of the project that you would otherwise get if you just calculate the horizontal surface area. So to be able to calculate the real surface area, you're going to need two components. The first is a digital terrain model and the higher resolution it is, the better because the way the calculations work is that they factor in the surface area of each pixel of the digital terrain model and then those are summed up together. So if your digital terrain model has very low resolution then obviously the calculation is not going to be so accurate and the second component is that you're going to need a boundary so you need to define the area that you want to measure and uh, you can either create that boundary inside of QGIS or just import it if you already have it or, or you have received it from somewhere so to import the digital train model that we can use for this project so we're just going to use one of the ones that we have in the project files so we can grab this one called DTM underscore MacIver. I think this is the highest resolution one that we have in these files. And uh, then we need to create a boundary. So I'm just gonna click on the new shape file layer button and I'm gonna call this boundary. And for geometry type, I'm gonna switch this to polygon and switch the coordinate system to this 3857, which is a projected coordinate system. And uh, then just press okay on that. Now I'm going to, now with that done, I'm going to first of all create the boundary. So we need to toggle on the editing and then click on the add polygon feature button. And then I'm just going to start left clicking to create some kind of an irregular shape boundary. With this method that I'm going to show you, you can use irregular shape boundaries. There are other methods out there that uh, will allow you to calculate real surface area, but they only work on but when you use regular shape boundaries. So they're not necessarily ideal for the standard type of work that we're doing with where we measure areas of parcels and uh, properties and so on, which typically have irregular boundaries. So I'm going to just uh, make a few clicks here and then just right click to accept the shape and press OK. You can also add more polygons if you want to this layer just by making more shapes. So this method works regardless of how many polygons you have on a layer. I'm going to toggle out of the editing and click on save and just uh, for comparison purposes, I want to measure the pure horizontal area of this shape. So to do this easily, we can come up here to the Show Statistical Summary button and click on that. This panel will appear. All you have to do is to select the boundary that you want to measure here under the drop down menu or just drag and drop it there. And then in the empty field type dollar sign area and press enter. And the field that you're interested in is this sum field. So this will give you the total sum of uh, this area. For me, this is currently in hectares. So you can see we have about 45 hectares. And if you want to change this, you can go under the project properties and under the general tab, units for area measurement is currently set to hectares. If we set this to square meters and click on apply and okay, all we have to do is to delete the area command and press enter and then just retype the area command. And you can see now it will show it in square meters. From here, the next thing that uh, we should do is to trim or clip the DTM to our boundary because we don't want to measure the whole DTM. We just want to measure it within the confines of this boundary. So we're going to select the DTM, go under the raster menu, go extraction and choose the clip raster by mask layer. For input layer, we're going to specify our DTM. For mask layer, we're going to select our boundary. Everything else can stay the same and just click on run. Then exit out of the algorithm, hide the original DTM, and you can see now our DTM is clipped to our boundary. Now I'm going to right click on this link layer and call this DTM clip. And now what we have to do is to create the base layer from which we can extract the real surface area. And to do this, we are going to use a command called real surface area. To find that, just Go to the bottom left corner of QGS and in the empty field type real surface area and it is the only command there so just press enter for the elevation field just drag and drop the clipped dtm that we just created and then click on run and you may have to wait a few seconds for this to finish once it's done you can close out of this algorithm you can see it created this sort of output 
Now this is not the final output we are looking for, this is just the base. So we need to create one more layer to get to the real surface area. And to do this, we're going to use another command called Zono Statistics. Again, just type Zono Statistics in the bottom left corner, and it's the first one, just Zono Statistics. For the input layer, we're going to drag our boundary, and for the raster layer, we're going to drag the surface area output that we just created. Everything else can stay the same, just click on Run, and then close out of the algorithm. Now you can see it created this new boundary or vector layer called Zono Statistics. And it has the exact same extent as our original boundary. The only difference is that now, if we open up the attribute table for the zonal statistics layer, it will have these three outputs here. And the one we are interested in is this sum total. So this is the actual real surface area of this boundary when it factors in the elevation of the DTM that uh, we use. So again, if I bring up the real surface area, you can see it's 71 hectares, just about, and the actual pure horizontal area is just 45 hectares. So that's a huge difference uh, between these two. And again, this is why on some projects, it can make a considerable difference uh, in certain aspects if you measure the real surface area compared to just the pure horizontal area. Now, there is a lot more we can do with the real surface area, but Perhaps we will expand on that in future videos. For now, I hope this has been useful for you. Thank you for watching, and we're going to see you in the next session.